Hello and welcome Hi. to another week of energy and star signs readings with myself, Thomas Janak, and my guest Jane Arnold. Welcome again. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> We're looking at the week of September the 21st to September the 27th, 2020. 2020, that's obviously also the week where we have the um, September equinox, which normally, well, not normally it will, actually highlight everything we're going to talk about, everything we, we will have for the week, both in the overall energy as well as the star signs, will be much more severe, <laughs> good or bad, on the 22nd. Because it is on the 21st, but normally the effect will probably be felt much more on the 22nd than on the 21st. Um, so that's going to be the Tuesday, if that makes sense. So let's have a look at the overall energy for the week ahead. And then we're going into the star signs. We're still in Virgo. It only changes to uh, Libra on the 23rd. So we're starting with Virgo and then next week um, we will be in Libra. So here we go. Let's have a look at the overall energy for all of us. Again, we're looking at the week of September the 21st to September the 27th, 2020. Not a bad week. We have the timber wolf and the Canada goose. Here's what that means. The, the message for all of us this week is to not do things alone. Don't hide. Don't fall into a hole. Don't be too isolated because we have the timber wolf, which takes, which takes strength from the pack. Right? Also means, since you have a timber wolf here, you, or we, all of us, um, ought to be in charge this week. So this is not a week for the timid, as it were. Um, that doesn't mean you have to be overly powerful. It just means like pay attention, that you're not doing things alone, and stand your ground. Be in the now. Don't give in to depression. Easier said than done. But if possible, you know, we have a, a lovely um, week uh, weather-wise coming up. Um, so, um, you know, go for a walk. Do something to shift. If you're indoors, you could still use your, use your pendulum, even light candles to change the energy, because we have the Canada goose. And the message here is that the Canada goose flies about 5,000 miles before she lands again, which means this is, this is a week where we have to be patient. So whatever comes up this week will probably not leave within a day, if that makes sense. So be patient with any topic and also be patient with yourself and at the same time when things get heavy or should things get heavy don't fall into a hole and sometimes we fall into the holes ourselves by sort of giving in like you know becoming a, a couch potato or these sort of things <laughs> and i understand that completely it's easier said than done but all the guides can say is what they feel we should be doing and then we have free will and sometimes you know, we, we are strong enough to listen and other times we are not. It is what it is. But these are the messages for the overall energy for the whole week. And now we are starting with the first star sign. Are you ready? Okay. For yes. Virgo. Interesting week coming up then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look. See what's coming up for Virgo for the week. Okay, so we have the plane and the angel. So I won't show them because I can't see anything here, can I? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so um, the plane, first of all, um, it indicates a journey, but it's not necessarily a journey overseas that you're physically taking. This can be a journey within yourself, and that's what I feel this is. I feel it's a journey that you're on, that you're taking, or that you will be taking, um, but there's, um, if, if you choose to take this path, if you choose to take this journey. Um, it's, there's a feeling with this about more fulfilment, more happiness, um, but it's just, um, there's a little bit of, a little bit of nervousness about this journey as well. So, um, whoever, whoever understands this card, will understand why there's a hesitancy with this journey, with this path. But I feel you should consider it because I feel it will be good. And the reason that I also feel that is because you have the angel 
card that is with this as well. So that is absolutely confirming and saying that the angels are with you, protecting you, guiding you and will be with you on this specific journey that you're going to be taking. So definitely go for it. Yeah, and just to say that, because we have the equinox um, on the 21st, this is, traditionally speaking, the night where if you do anything like meditating, drumming, uh, meeting up with people in a, in a spiritual setting, that's the night where the energy is really high and powerful. So maybe you need to do something on that day, the 21st, mm -hmm. uh, first day of the week, so to speak, um, to charge your batteries, to be more capable and more able and probably even a bit more relaxed and at ease um, for the week ahead, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a good idea. Um, yeah. So now we're going from Virgo into Libra. Let's have a look what we got. We got a big horn sheep and the lynx. For Libras, if you are struggling, um, and I mean this with um, financial stuff, how this works is money is not a spiritual currency. So you can't manifest money. What you can manifest is stability, is a, is a, is a life that allows you to live in harmony with your surroundings and so where you're not stressed. And even this is obviously hard to accomplish because everybody has free will and you always meet people who are not quite there yet and they're making life difficult. But you have the big horn sheep, which is what we call a money card. And basically what it means is it's an animal that hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall. So financial stability will come this week. What I'm getting strongly is to not misunderstand it and play the bloody lottery. Mm. <laughs> it just feels like, you know, you, you would spend money because you want money to come. What you're after is money. Yeah. And money is not a spiritual currency. Here's what I'm getting from, from my guides with regards to work. Obviously, they're showing me my work. It just means that when you do what you came here to do, and I know not everybody does that yet, but that's another thing to manifest this week. Manifest, I want to do what I feel I came here to do. And then that also manifests the stability for you to do that. So it's not just financial, because we have the lynx. And this is important, because the lynx is an animal, um, that is, like a big cat, that needs a vantage point. And the idea is, step back a little, look at a vantage point, and have a look at realizing, what is it I actually want to do? Where am I actually stuck? And then when you manifest a new, that's when the stability can come quicker, if that makes sense, right? But because you have the big one sheep and the lynx, these animals are not, the way to, 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 to I call it would be heavy energy animals. So it's not going to be an oppressive week by any means, but it is a week for you to, to re-manifest and trust that the stability that you're, that you're looking for and, and longing for, to a certain extent, is coming in. That was Libra going into Scorpio. Scorpio. Let's have a little look. <laughs> okay, we have Wish and Thorns. So for Scorpio, um, your heart's desire is ready to come true. So whatever it is that you've been wishing for, longing for, or absolutely a new wish or something that you would like. Start putting those intentions and those thoughts out now. So it particularly goes with what we've just been saying. Yeah. So uh, because I, I feel the empowerment and the energy is actually going to bring to the fore all these things that you would like. And But you've got to really believe it and really believe that it can come. There's no point saying, I want this, but I know it won't. Because yeah. then you're just putting that block on that energy itself. So really put those wishes out there and watch them come. But with this, there is a word of caution with this because we have thorns. And the thorns, um, it's about challenges ahead. Um, so it's a little bit of be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you want because you may just get it and it may not be what you think it's going to be. So just really think about your wishes first before you put that energy out there. Okay, that was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. 
Sinanov is it Sagittarius cis or Sagittarians? Sagittarians. Sagittarians. There we go. Sagittarians. Okay. For you Sagittarians, well, it just sounds Sagittarius sounds very sounds very German, doesn't it? Sagittarius. And also there's a lot of S in there. Um, coming from Frankfurt, I can't pronounce TH and sometimes I have problems with S. And in my new phone number, after my phone has hacked, it has here it comes three threes. And I think the universe did this. Just to have a laugh. <laughs> right? So, Sagittarius. I actually do, do believe that because if someone says, What's your phone number? Uh, here it goes. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. So, Sagittarians, you have the panther and the coyote. Remember, the overall energy war was this week was to um, look at being in charge and not to hide. And you have the panther, which is in essence a leopard hiding in a different sort of skin for want of a better word so you are, so there's part of you that still hide your your whole strengths and this week is the week for you to say that's what i want to happen my feeling is and we have overlapping energy already the feeling that i'm getting strongly for this week is that this is a perfect week for manifestation because it has come up virtually every single time mm. so this is the week to manifest you don't manifest by being miserable. It, and I'm not knocking this. I have health, mental health issues myself, so I understand how depression can hit you over the head. <laughs> but knowing that this is the week for you to say, like, no, I'm not hiding. I'm saying I'm here. That's what I want. That's what I'm capable of. Work on your self-esteem, for want of a better word. It's important. And here's another little thing. I would call it a promise, even though the universe doesn't promise simply because there's so many things that can go wrong in the sense that everybody has free will. The moment you work with another person, nobody knows what they're really going to do, <laughs> if that makes sense. But you have the coyote. And the message of the coyote is, I'm a coyote, I'm a scavenger, and I know I will always find food. And what that means in analogy or in symbolism is for you to realize if you say I am taking stock of what I want and I am manifesting what I believe I can do, want to do, then the coyote is saying yes and we will support you so don't worry about anything. Okay, so it's actually quite a powerful thing. The emphasis though is on you getting out of that panther skin, if that makes sense, and become the leopard again. And the leopard obviously is the animal that has unique stripes, unique dots. There's no two leopards alike. And so be your unique self and don't worry about a thing. Right? That was Sagittarians, not Sagittarius's, <laughs> going into Capricorns. <laughs> Okay, we have plane again. Journeys, journeys, journeys. Wow. Yeah. And the dragonfly. So uh, for Capricorns, so um, it, it really is. Um, I can't change. I don't feel I need to change the spin on it at all. It really is about journeys, where you're heading, what you want from life, um, what it is that you want to do. But I, I feel with this card, it's more about starting to think about these plans rather than doing them. I feel the energy yeah. is with the thinking, the putting in, in, in the thoughts out there, but you're not ready to manifest those yet. But you do need to start thinking about how you're going to make your life better, more for the things that you want. And um, the reason that I feel that is you have the dragonfly next to it, which is such a spiritual card. Um, and this is all about confidence, joy, renewal, connecting to spirit. Um, and I feel... Um, I actually feel Capricorn there is going to be a spiritual connection um, going on this period of time as well so um, either watch out for spiritual signs um, if you've recently lost loved ones they're going to be coming calling um, as long as you wish them to if you don't you just put that out there but I do feel that there's a real spiritual connection this week for Capricorns as well lovely week perfect so Aquarius Aquarius is Aquarians. Aquarians. See, there we go. <laughs> For Aquarians, you have the red wolf and the groundhog. This is now changing a few things because this energy is very, 
much heavier than the ones for the previous star signs, which means that some of you Aquarians are overthinking big time. What it also means is that some of you might be natural born worriers and it doesn't make a difference. You worry all it does. It takes away the joy of the moment. If you can't control things, worrying about them won't do a thing. Because you have the red wolf, which means, remember we had the timber wolf in the beginning for the over energy, which is to be in charge. Here you have the red wolf, which is also called the Ethiopian wolf, because that's where he lives. <laughs> and he lives in the desert where opportunities are scarce and where life is much harsher, which, which means in symbolism, you're already feeling energetically low and you probably feel boxed in and just not so great. And here is how to change it. Because you have the ground talk, you have probably all seen this lovely movie with, um, what's his name again? Um, oh, don't ask me now. Yeah, Bob, Bob Murray? Is, is, is it? Groundhog Day. You're Groundhog right. Day, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I always like this movie. Anyway, yeah. the Groundhog Day is basically, or the Groundhog is basically saying to you, it's, it's a symbolism. The more you repeat what you do day by day, the less you change anything. So that's another star sign, Aquarius, that is asked to step back and take stock and re-manifest and put your wishes out there. Anyone remember the band Kiss? I was made for loving you, baby. I'm sure you do. Well, their bass player is called Gene Simmons. And in an interview, someone said to him, like, how did you become so successful? And he said, if you dream, dream big. Right? Well, that sounds very New Yorkish. And that's obviously where the guy's from, you know, after he came over from Israel as a child. Point I'm making is, he's coming in here. That energy is coming in to me, so I, I should have spared you the song, I get it, but it's just how my guy works me all of a sudden, he's there, there, you know. At least I didn't put my tongue out. <laughs> like, like he's oh, just, yeah. you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Just for effect. The point the guys are making is, this is about saying, and I am changing this. This almost sounds egotistical, because that's also the energy, unfortunately, that Gene Simmons sort of brings. You know, it's actually quite interesting that they highlight energy bringing me a rock star it's really weird you know but um then again i love my guys because they're completely mental <laughs> in a good way and that's why we work so well together <laughs> but what they're bringing basically is to say like without being egotistical if you say i believe in myself and i deserve to be happy that's a massive start and i've been saying this for years i have this mantra i wake up in the morning and go like I'm awesome! Most of, the, most of the time the cat just goes, yeah, whatever. But the point is, I'm not saying it with ego. I'm just saying, I'm awesome, and it usually cracks me up. And the trick is, if the energy is already higher then, because it is more lighthearted, whatever hits you on in that day, is much harder to tear you down. So these, these manifestations, you could have them on your, on your wall, saying everything will be fine, I deserve better, if that makes sense. You know, so, but you need to manifest and you need to do something about it because unfortunately having the red wolf, which means being boxed in, means that your energy by default is quite low. And because the overall energy is to be in charge, that's where you're being challenged. And if you don't want to be challenged, the challenge is even harder because it is coming up. It is just the energy of the week ahead. So be prepared, Aquarians, but also... This is, I think, the, the, the scene that we have had a lot here. This has to do with you trusting. And sometimes people don't trust because they can't see the outcome. And you can never see the outcome because life is a journey. But ask yourself this, what have you got to lose? So what's, what's wrong with trusting this time it'll work? Okay? So it's just the feeling that I get is, is, is this self-motivation yeah. by saying, because ground talk, which means rep repetition, Things must stop repeating themselves. Yeah. And that's the main message here, right? Okay, going into Pisces, our star sign. Our star sign. You know, to, have, to yeah. be fair, I'm always, I always love it when I don't have to read it. <laughs> because when I read it, I automatically think about my life. <laughs> and it takes, me, it takes me a moment to be professional. Kind of thing, like, oh my God, what's, what's in there for me? So listening to it, it's much easier. Here we go, let's have a look what's happening 
um, with our spices. Remember, we're looking at the week of September the 21st to the 27th, 2020. Okay, we have Unity and Mountain. And the Unity calm, uh, card, this, um, this straight away makes me feel calm, loved, warm. So I actually feel this is the time for um, Pisces to actually love themselves a little bit more, to be kinder to themselves a little bit more, because um, it, it's just, we beat ourselves up, mm. Pisces, and, um, and I just, I feel that we need to just stop doing that a little bit and understand what we've been through uh, because we now have a time of renewal coming and a time of peace and hope and this is a really wonderful card for moving forward absolutely because you have the mountain next to it and this tells me um, that Pisces we're all protected we're all shielded and we, we have help with the challenges that we've already had and the challenges that are coming as well because there are still some challenges coming um, they're not finished with yet but then um, remain cautious remain optimistic keep calm don't panic one foot in front of the other because you will get there but know that you're protected as you do it know that you're surrounded with spirit as you do this and I, have, I, I just I always feel that mountains are behind us as well. Yes. We always see mountains behind, we don't see the mountains coming. Yes. So I feel that although we have some mountains behind us, that we've already been there and weathered those storms, it's just a little, a little one ahead. So just keep faith, keep calm, love yourself a little bit more and you'll get there. Perfect. I will take this on board, which is absolutely awesome. Mm. Going into Aries, Let's have a look at Aries. Okay. Aries are asked to allow for deep healing to happen. You have the grizzly bear and the grey fox. The bear is the animal in, in, in um, the spirit world, so to speak, that is almost, if, if you can say it that way, it's all about femininity. And blokes now wonder, okay, what does that have to do with me? It has a lot to do with all of us because we are both male and female. The, the energy is inherent in all of us. We have different lives in different scenarios, different bodies. And people sometimes say like, oh, you know, you have the softer side of you, which could be called the feminine side. So what um, Aries are asked to do is to be soft and kind. So also it means escaping the strong word but when someone comes at you with negativity standing there and taking it makes things worse mm -hmm. so they're almost doing this when they say like well start ducking right and it feels like um, if they this is what I'm getting for for Aries this is not about problems that are coming from miles away where all of a sudden there's a problem this has all to do with problems that are already existing people close to you, situations already known to you, um, where you have been hurt, for want of a better word. And what the, what the, what the guides are saying is, um, now is the time to, to heal. Um, the best way to normally do this is to just allow yourself to have a good cry because tears are sacred medicine, really, really important. Um, also, this is the time for Aries to realize how important you are. This goes a bit... Um, far out if that makes sense because this is about symbolism and the grizzly bear symbolically has a contract with the bees if that makes sense um i won't explain it now explain it now it takes too long but the point is because the grizzly bear therefore protects the bees and the bees then leave a little bit of honey because the, the bear rubs his little bum on the tree so nobody goes there if that makes sense it's a bit of a of a, of, of a working together yeah. um so so they call it a contract in the spiritual world what it means is since the bee is so important for everything that grows for life itself and you don't have to be a friend of bees it's just realizing that bees are super important for the planet and so what the grizzly bear is saying to you, the kindness is saying inside you, you are important. And it's time you believe that you deserve better because you have the grey fox. When you have the fox, it's always the same message. You're an old soul. 
you have been in situations like this before, sometimes your kindness doesn't work for you. But the main focus this week has to be to allow yourself to just let go of stuff that isn't working. And sounds a bit wrong, but if there was a bear in the room, I wouldn't be. <laughs> so you have to put people in their place and or walk away. Um, and that means people and situations because you deserve better. And if people are by default um, coming for you because that's what they, that's all they know, if that makes sense, it's their karma. Don't take it. Okay? So it is a, a bit of a heavier week mm. for Aries, but it's not a depressive or depressing week. All they're saying is if you are hiding from the pain this week, it's not going anywhere. So allow yourself to heal, maybe do something that shifts it a little. Again, you know, all these spiritual things come to mind. Work with pendulums, even light a candle and put all your worries into the candle and then blow out the light and say like, I, I'm, I'm putting everything I dislike, everything that hurts me into the candle and then I let it go. And this way with the, with the smoke, it will be transformed into better things, right? So let's do this for you, for your Aries, just to show this to you. You put your worries into the candle, that is you can think of, put it in the candle. And then you go, okay, and now it will be transformed, if that makes sense. Okay, and we leave, we leave another candle on, just in case there is more worries. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because you never know, you know. <laughs> I'll do mine on yeah. that one. <laughs> okay, and now we're going from Aries into Taurus. Okay, we have the coffin and the chariot. Um, the coffin, people um, often worry when they get the coffin card, the death card in tarot cards, but it doesn't mm. mean that at all. All it means is um, natural endings and natural new beginnings. To have a new beginning, you have something has to end. Yeah. One door has to close when another door opens. So it's, it's just simply about um, letting things go closing the door on things that aren't working anymore for you quite deep isn't it this yeah. this week yes very. um on things that aren't working for you or things that aren't going anywhere things that aren't making you happy so it's really just about letting those things go not holding on to them there's a feeling that um they've been holding on far too long and it's now's the time to just let that happen let them go uh, because the new doors and the new opportunities then can come forward um, so that really does need to happen. And Chariot, perfect card now. This is charging ahead with confidence. So know that when you close those doors, when you let go of those, opportuni those opportunities that weren't working for you, that the new opportunities will. So be confident, charge ahead, be strong, be focused. But there's, there's a feeling with this that you really need to be positive about this. Don't keep going back. So you want to half close the door so you can half open the open mm. the door. That won't work. You have to really be positive, really be strong and just let those things go and really be confident that your future that's coming is bright. That's good, that is. I like that. Okay, that was Taurus mm. going into Gemini. Gemini, you have the white tail deer and the jaguar. The deer is the animal that tells you if you are being chased during the day, if you are chased by deadlines, people tell you what to do, even though you know what, you, what you're doing, it stresses you out. You function best, that's the analogy, at sunrise and sunset. That doesn't mean you function best at sunrise and sunset. It just means you need to have these moments of absolute calm. So start your day off right. If you are a person that feels stressed, you know, setting the alarm for 10 minutes earlier is less stress than setting it for the normal time and then snooze. The idea that comes to mind is to learn to get up earlier and enjoy a real cup of tea without having to worry about time. It's just one of those scenarios that the guides are giving me. It's where they're saying to you, yes, it's true, there's only 24 hours in a day, but you can tweak the time that you have been given, which is also the deal, because being chased by appointments, by things that need to be done, um, put stress inside you and therefore you become skittish and you miss sometimes important cues. 
um, about how to do things differently. Also, I'm getting that strongly for Gemini. Do not please anybody. Try not to even please anybody. There's a saying, you can never please everybody, All isn't it? Time. All the time. And that's one of those things. You are good enough, if people feel you need to please them, then that's their problem, not yours. You're doing more than enough. Because you have the Jaguar, which means you have unique dots. And the Jaguar is the animal that is obviously oftentimes hiding in the panther. We had that earlier. Is is because you're doing so much, especially for others, that's what I'm getting. Um, you, you have stopped looking at all the things you initially wanted to do. And this is a week, actually, I, I feel strongly, this is a week of getting, getting free. Yeah. You know, putting, pu pu pushing through things. Like, no, I'm doing things differently now. So it's actually a kick-ass week, which I very much like. Yeah. And also, we have the time of year on our side. This is the week, the last week of September. This is the week where everything turns. This is uh, where it is visible that leaves are changing, leaves are falling, things are transforming. And so you are in the energy of transformation, which helps you transform. But focus on, again, sounds selfish, but focus on what it is you really want and then make space for it. Unfortunately for Gemini, you are the person that has to claim that space. It's not going to happen that someone comes in and says like, oh yeah, we took a bit of your time here and I, I, now we're doing it differently. You have to claim that space, right? But you have an animal with antlers, you have the deer, like I said, the white-tailed deer, which means antlers are protection, right? So um, you can do this and you will be fine, okay? That was Gemini going into Cancer, Cancerians. Getting yeah, getting better. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Which is our second last um, star sign of the week. So here we go with Cancerians. Okay, we have the eagle and birth. Um, the eagle, this, this is all about uh, you actually um, focusing, but you're looking from a higher point and looking down. You can actually see what's going on around you a lot more. Um, and and I, I feel with this, um, you're going to start to see things more as they really are because you've got that distance, you're soaring above, you can actually see the whole picture rather than just seeing the snippets. And I feel that you're actually going to see the whole picture, you'll have more clarity on what's going on around you. Um, but I actually feel this is, this is a beautiful card because I wish you could see it, but just here there's a rainbow. Can you, just get can a you bit try closer? and show that? There's a, there's a beautiful rainbow just in can there you as see well. It? And he's soaring above the rainbow. Okay. That's it, absolutely. It's so with card. this rainbow, it's just the pot of gold at the, is at the end of the rainbow. So just keep going the way that you're going because there's, there's luck coming your way with this as well. So although at the time you might not feel it, because I feel sometimes when you get this card, you can see things you don't always want to see. But know that you're heading towards um, a positive, fortuitous destination. And with this, um, you've got the birth card as well, which is absolutely wonderful. So this is either, it can physically be newborns coming into your life, but also it's the birth of new opportunities, new possibilities, new desires, which has come through on near enough every, everything that we've been saying so far. So the fact that you're gonna see things how they are, and sometimes we don't always like that, but know that the, there's a new birth of opportunities and desires and things and possibilities, but know that they, they will be good for you because you've got the comfort of the rainbow at the end of yeah. this as well. And remember the overall energy was, or started with the wolf being in charge, which means if new opportunities present themselves, they present themselves for a reason. Yeah. So trust it and sort of charge ahead, if yeah. that makes sense, right? So we're going into our final star sign for the week of September the 21st to the 27th, 2020. As they say, shittiest year on the planet mm. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Even though I have to say, I always believe that it is still always what you make it. 
if that makes sense. If you give in to feeling depressed because everything around us isn't quite working so well, then we all become part of the problem. What we really have is us, is ourselves. And especially, um, this is a time, and it's actually, um, this has to do with Leo, by the way, it is really important to realize this, that strength lies in trusting someone and almost bouncing off of someone and not do things alone. Here is why this has to do with Leo, because you have the turtle and the peregrine falcon, which means you have been waiting for things to happen and things are still quite sluggish and slowish in coming through to you but now you have the falcon coming into your energy which means now we're breaking through to see what's out there so this is another uh, star sign that has well i wouldn't say it's an epiphany but this is all of a sudden you feel like hang on a second what am i doing here i have the feeling for leo this is about realizing what your energy does Mm. and then changing the energy to a higher energy and normally it's just by saying f off negativity i'm better than this and often it starts that way isn't it yeah. you can just like oh life is really crap or you say you know what f off i've had enough where's the chocolate <laughs> yeah. you know um, so that's what i'm getting it is uh, for leo's very much um where it starts with you when you say you need to realize that when things are sluggish, this has, this, this has to do, may have to do with the times, because that's what I'm getting as well with the turtle. Things are not quite as fast. Especially, I get this, I don't know, for, obviously, I always believe that the people who need to hear the message will find the video. But what they're showing me obviously can't be for all Leos, <laughs> but it will be for some. And what they're showing me is that some of you may think now is the time to let things go and physically move out of the country that you grew up in. So they're quite specific here. Yeah. And all the guides are saying is absolutely, but not without having a plan. Don't be silly and go like, you know what, I've had enough. I'm going to take my little rucksack and off I go. No, you have to have thought this through. But if you're really thinking about it, what the guides are saying is ask us, to help you ask us to manifest it with you by saying that's my intention and you can leave because if you are getting impatient then you feel like the place where you're in somehow isn't working for you and then you get really frustrated because you feel like you don't belong there anymore and it doesn't help if that makes sense because then everything that you're planning from this very place that you're in becomes tedious and somewhat difficult Right? So I know there was a bit of a digression here, um, but this is certainly for some Leos out there. Um, so if you want to move abroad, you can still do this, but you have to always remember we're going through times where Thank some you, countries sure. have lockdowns and other people have put people on furlough, which means they're not waiting for you to get a job, <laughs> if that makes sense. So it's going to be always difficult because of the energy that is globally happening. And at this point in time, it doesn't matter if there is a pandemic or it's a made-up bullshit machine. It really doesn't matter. The point is the energy is real. And because people in their various countries live according to the energy, everything is slower. Which is why the turtle is saying to you, you can afford to be slow. Right? Okay? So, that's all we have time for. That was actually awesome. It's actually not a bad week. It was yeah. just like, it was a bit in your face, wasn't it's it? Been so <laughs> <out>. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but then to be fair, every time it comes to growth, if life would be easy, none of us would do anything. Yeah. And, and that is the truth as well. There's also a saying which is called the concept of the wounded healer, which means that the people who are sensitive and deep will feel everything much more. But when things are on the up, and you feel things are coming together, you also feel that much more. And we just need to learn to embrace the good times, if that makes sense. Change is important. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. also, I, I truly believe that change is the only constant in the universe. Yeah. There's always change. It's important. Right? The change that I can see is I'm, I'm, I'm turning grey. <laughs> I'm still gorgeous. Anyway, <laughs> that's all we have time for. See you all very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>